So at this point, we're going to transition in our programming from the panels to a presentation of a film that was created for the Our Talk Tells event by Bjorn Olson. We also have Aussie with us to speak about the relationship with Salmon. Bjorn will be showing the subsistence film, The Spirit of Our Ancestors. And so I hope that you stay on for this part of our presentation. Uh, I really appreciate being invited here to share this film. My name is Bjorn Olson. I'm an independent filmmaker currently residing in Homer, originally from the upper Copper River Valley, the current and ancestral home of the Atna, and the great champion of Alaska subsistence, Katie John. I'm grateful beyond words to have been approached by RTOC to produce this short film about subsistence. There are few standards that imply ecological health better than the ability to wild harvest from the land, sea, rivers, and air. To feed your family and loved ones the world's most nutrient-dense foods, free from pesticides, hormones, and other man-made poisons, is how it is supposed to be. I'm thankful for all the people who contributed to this film and their efforts to share their perspectives to this audience and beyond. Sadly, for far too many in our modern world, the relationship between health of self and health of habitat has been severed. My high hope is that this short film can help reawaken and rekindle the bond that exists in each of us within the natural world <clears throat> and the nutrition it provides. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the people in the film. I'm grateful to Alana Hurley and Dolores Larson for their tireless work and efforts to protect Bristol Bay. I'm grateful for Aussie, a torchbearer of Ubit cultural knowledge and wisdom. I'm grateful for May Siluk, originally from Gamble, and her willingness to share her subsistence practices with others. And I'm grateful for <clears throat> adopted member of the Knights Indian tribe, Professor Alan Boras, who helped preserve the outer inlet Dena'ina dialect with Peter Fal Kalifornsky, the last speaker. Sadly, a few months after I recorded my interview with Professor Boras, he passed on to the next realm. This little film is a little over nine minutes long, when it wraps up, we will hear from, uh, from one of the people in the film, singer, songwriter, Aussie. Um, and I, with that, hope you enjoy the film. And I will attempt to share my screen now. Sharing is partly a, a phenomena of food, people who need food. Usually uh, salmon is shared to the elders who can't get salmon as easily. But the data also shows that people with salmon are sharing to other people with salmon. And those people with salmon are sharing back again. Everybody's, in other words, it's not a reflection necessarily of need but it's a reflection of community. You are a member of a group by the fact that you have wild salmon that you caught yourself and that you share it with others. So in this case, to share it to the ancestors is a reflection of that extended community in the past. The overall importance of salmon is an enduring theme. Our main mission is you know, very simple and that's to protect our way of life, to make sure that our people can continue to be Yupikdan and Anilutuk. And we know that we cannot do that if we do not have our, our basic and sacred connection with the land and waters. And so that, that is our main mission, is to make sure that our, our home is protected so our people can continue to thrive there as we have for millennia. The lessons I learned about subsistence is that we, we share our catch with the elderly and the needy and the widowed and ask nothing in return. And being responsible and not over harvesting and not being greedy. Salmon are 
our measure of sustainability. If we can keep salmon, wild salmon, runs healthy, keep the habitat healthy, and do something about whatever might be happening in the open ocean related to salmon so that 50 years, 100 years, there's still wild salmon uh, to be shared and eaten, then, um, then we'll have done something good for the world and ourselves for that matter. was always to, to honor all beings um, if what was the saying Akika you would if you do not honor another being another animal um, the spirits will there, there will be backlash our languages and cultures and ways of doing didn't come from us, but it came from having this active, open-ended relationship with the world that we are nurtured by. Ethics was always at the forefront um, to honor the animal that you've, you've caught, to always give um, to others who were less fortunate because in that manner you will be more successful in later hunts, later, later gathering. Like our ancestors, we've been able to live off this land, we've been able to learn from this land, we've been able to keep that connection. I helped someone today and I thought that her words were so profound. She's like, so much has changed over the course of, you know, contact with the Western world and colonization. But what is most important is still there, and that is our connection with our land, our connection with our waters, and the deep spiritual connection of our people to this place still exists. And that is what we're trying to protect. lifelong subsistence user, a hunter, gatherer, and fisherwoman. I am a provider for a family of five along with four other family households. A provider is one who is responsible to go out and catch the fish that we preserve in many ways. One who goes out to hunt for moose, caribou, geese, and ducks, gather wild plants and berries. Everyone in our families play an important role in our subsistence lifestyle. It is not easy living this way of life, but we would not have it any other way. It's not subsistence and this and that. Salmon is life. It's a ritual of life. It's in our culture that, you know, the more we give away, the more we will receive. Uh, there are virtually no wild salmon left of, of a large enough magnitude to be harvestable. The last healthiest run runs, the world's largest sockeye salmon run, it happens in the Bering Sea on the coast. That we are to understand how important salmon is to us in Alaska particularly in southwest, south central, and southeast Alaska. That's, a, that's something that we're doing right, and we should be acknowledging that. Now we have to follow that with good science and good decision making. That will be based on the ethic 
that wild salmon is important to preserve for as long as we can see into the future. That's our charge. The real creator, the real God, the real Samyo, never gave permission to have dominion over anybody, but to have this relationship, this spiritual relationship, this relationship that will be for the benefit of all, not just a group of people. As a disclaimer, also uh, uh, I'm related to Alana Hurley, uh, distantly, but uh, we like I, I like to think we're a close family, um, of one in many extended family. And um, that last so the song that you just heard, uh, the closing song was is actually a song that is of my own work, and it relates directly relates to the salmon. Um, and how that came about was um, a number of years ago I was out to King, King Cove to teach art and teachers welcomed me and they, um, they fed me that e uh, evening and went, I went to my quarters and not long after the wind picked up and started howling and it something out there struck me and I started humming it and it became that song. And I tried to add verses to it for a number of years, about three years approximately. And this book came out called The Way We Genuinely Live. And in that book, which is basically authored by a bunch of elders and who have uh, in my opinion, from that generation who were born in the early 1900s, who were the last educated in the last group of generation who were educated in the old, old Yupi culture as we know it. And in that, with, with this history that spanned millennia, um, this knowledge, and um, in one of them was... Um, in the, uh, when it's constantly blowing in the springtime, uh, from the north, um, they push the smaller species of king salmon, they call it, to the coast and do their spawn till you die thing. Whereas, Ungalamak from the south, um, in Upnachkami Anuklichtuha, and when it's constantly windy in the in the springtime from the south, Jingu Lagani Luki Dagyakfit um push these really big king salmon made popular, famous by the Kina River King, um, to do their spawn till you die thing. And I put that in the first and second verse into it, and it was like it was made for, for that song. So, you know, as a testament to that relationship, it's important to maintain that, 
And in that same book, um, my uncle John Philip Sr. from Gangichanok said this, and it rings true. Do not be fooled that just because we're speaking Gasak now that the land is going to change. You can still gain knowledge and wisdom from it, and it will always remain Yupik. And, you know, I like, I, I have a different lens of, uh, lens of, uh, that I now see the world now, um, that we all have indigenous roots. We all came from somewhere. And we you know we, we should honor those roots. It's what makes us human, you know, down to the core. And um, I'll leave it at that. And I, I feel like I was very um, privileged and honored to be part of this video. And the way Bjorn weaved those stories, those interviews, um, was quite powerful. And I thank you for that. And I much respect to the late Dr. Or Ellen Boris for taking the lead on in in the um, the documentary. So Kuyana, thank you. Finish Chish and Kuyana Asi for your contributions and I um, something I missed saying earlier before introducing this segment is I wanted to also say thank you to Alana Hurley for her powerful voice. And then we transition into Asi and your message and this powerful voice. And Bjorn so eloquently helped to portray our love for salmon and how important and dear it is to us through the vision and through your words. Ganesh Chish. <laughs> 